Hey guys, it's day four. Yesterday we finished covering in our trench. We're finishing putting on all of our connectors on all of the buried feed lines. After this, we're gonna start RF transmit nulls out in the field. We're gonna probably do DDM nulls. Once that's all set up, then we're gonna make sure our powers are set up. We get a good initial width and our center lines are back at, our center line is back at reference. And that'll be about as far as we could probably get today. Okay, what we're doing next is we're identifying all of our buried cables. We've got everything labeled on the ground plate here, but nothing's labeled at the DU. So we're going to use a 50 ohm load and put it on the open end of each cable at the distribution unit. Uh, and then I did. Hey, Doug. Doug. All right, so I've been laying cable for a long time. In 45 years, this is the first time the shield is conducting. 1.4 ohms loop on the shield and an open on the center conductor. First time in 45 years. That's a lot of cable. <laughs> so what we're going to do is about a foot deep, as you might be able to see, we're going to lay two new quarter inch cables to replace that one that went bad. And um, we're going to put it in schedule 40 PVC, a one inch PVC and that will help provide some kind of protection since we're going shallow. But this is really unorthodox. This is not something I want to do, but it's something that we have to do to get the project going along. And uh, we're going to finish this and then we're going to Okay, get... we're back at the distribution unit and we're going to go ahead and do our initial transmit cable lengths. And we're just cutting the left sides based on our calculations. I don't know if you can be seen, but based on our calculations from last night, we're coming back today and making all the left antenna cuts. And which one are you cutting? Seven left, or excuse me, six left. Okay. So we've already so, made the measurements and then we're just cutting one side. So for six yeah, left, the calculator six. says cut 3.65 inches. Everything is pretty much pre-cut with the coaxial strippers. The only thing that he does special is position the cable about at one ridge past the end of the uh, coax stripper mm -hmm. to get the right cut back uh, on the cable. All right, you so should see about, what, about three ridges? About three ridges and about a half inch exposed on the center conductor. The oh. specs call for .475 if you really wanted to get down to it. But as long as it's about 0.45 to just a little over 0.5, it's going to be okay on that cutback. And so now we can, as long as the glue is all removed off of that center conductor, we can go ahead and put that TED center pin connector on. We're not going to solder any of these just yet, so that's why it's important to get all the glue off. Okay, we're going to put the connector back together on the cable. So this is the TED center pin. Just push it on and then it threads right over the corrugation of the Helix cable. And then we push the back nut, or slide the back nut up, and then we put the shell on. And so this is the end type uh, shell. And we're just going to snug it up with a 7 16 and half inch wrench. Before we end up setting up our RF nulls, I just wanted to go ahead and check the transmitters out. I've already verified the transmitter output powers are at facility references. Our core CSB is always 15 watts and clearance CSB is always 10 watts under transmitter data. You can see that here and here. Uh, the SBO is always facility reference and so we're at those facility reference powers at two, uh, course SBO 220 milliwatts and clearance SBO 244 milliwatts. Uh, so now we can go ahead and check out our modulation. Uh, the sequence is always powers, 
percent of modulation, and then phasing. So with powers done, let's go ahead and check our modulations. And we can see that over here with the PIR. I'm going to configure this up uh, for the localizer input. Behind me, I've got an RF sniffer hooked into the through-line wattmeter body. Okay, this is where our RF sniffer is plugged into our through-line wattmeter body. You can either put it in the reverse through line or the forward uh, or the forward through line. You're going to get modulation either way. I just like to put it in the reflected because I can get uh, transmitter power still on PMDT. Looking at modulations on course only, and we're going to turn the SBO waveform off by selecting CSB only. Then we're going to look at our PIR and we're going to set that up for 0, 0.000 DDM. And that is what we're getting. So no adjustments required. If we were going to make an adjustment, we do that for transmitter 1 under the normal waveform. And we make sure that it says uh, course uh, CSB modulation balance uh, is 0, 0.000 to start. Uh, and then we'd adjust that accordingly if we wanted to make sure we had 0 uh, actually coming out of the transmitter. Okay, so this is checking difference in depth of modulation between the 90 and 150 hertz modulated tones. Next, we're going to look at the sum of depth of modulation. So each tone is 20% modulation, total 40%. So I hit function, I just go arrow down, hit function again, and that gives me sum of depth of modulation, and I'm showing a 39.72%. So we can make a slight adjustment on that by going to transmitter waveforms under the normal profile and CSB modulation percent. We're going to click it up a couple times or hit F7 to acknowledge and now we're reading a 39.98%. And So now transmitter one uh, course amplifier is set up for power uh, the correct modulations and difference in depth of modulations I'm going to go ahead and do that for transmitter 2, and then we're going to do it all over again for the clearance side, clearance transmitter 1, and clearance transmitter 2. They're set up the same way. And, uh... Okay, now we're set up for coarse phasing, and we've got our quadrature cable in line with the coarse SBO feed line, and this puts the system in quadrature. Uh, then we go out in the field with the PIR, and we try to get minimum DDMs and balanced on both sides of the center line, uh, what we call the half widths in the far field. And in order to get that, we're going to trim on our feed lines here, these really long cables. Uh, there's plenty of length there to trim down and get that minimal DDM in the near field. Just a second. I'm going to just finish this thought and I'll pause this. I don't remember what the thought was. What did I say? With SBO phasing, we're going to adjust our cable lengths uh, over adjusting the maintenance data laptop phase offsets as much as possible in order to give us the most amount of adjustment over time. Okay, so the other technician is in the far field and he's measuring a 90 DDM in the 90. And so that tells us that we need to definitely make a phasing adjustment. So I'm going to put some cable lengths in to figure out what direction we need to go to reduce that down to something closer to zero DDM. You get an elbow. Okay, so far what I've got in here is I've, these are just some cable chunks to get us closer to zero and an elbow in there. Uh, what I've done so far, we started out at 90 dDm in the 90 hertz predominant tone, and then I added some cable chunks. It got worse, and I had to keep adding it to start bringing it back down, and. Now we're, in, we're headed in the right direction, so I'm just going to keep adding elbows and bullets to get this closer to zero. Because I'm 80 dDm away, I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive with a bullet and barrel combination. Alright, you got transmitter on, tell me what you got. Alright, now we've walked it down to 48 and the 90. I have a feeling one more bullet and barrel will get us really close to where we need to be. Okay, 15 in the 90. I'm going to put in just an elbow. Oh, 
Okay, so these are our final numbers. We ended up walking it all the way down from a 90 in the 90. It got a little bit higher, but then we went back down and we ended up with one in the 90 on the one that one side of the half width point with all of this cable length in there. So from from here all the way down to here. We're going to have to measure this on our network analyzer later and figure out how long this figure out how long this is electrically and cut that out of the other side. Uh, when I say other side, so this is the coarse uh, CSB, means we're gonna cut that amount of electrical cable length out of the coarse SBO feed line, wherever that is. But first we're gonna go to the other side and see what we've got. The uh, 90 side, and they measured, the 90 side half width that is, they measured a four and the 150. So with the 1 and the 90 on the 150 hertz side, um, we've got a spread of about 5 dDm. So if we wanted to optimally phase this system, we'd set this up to read about maybe 2 bouncing 3 in the 150 on this side, and that would result with 2 bouncing 3 in the 150 on that side. So about 2 to 3 on both sides would be a good balance. Okay, this is all the cable chunk that we had to include into our feed lines to get the phasing out there in the field correct. It measures negative 155 degrees. And so in order to figure out how much to cut physically on the cable, we take 155 degrees and just divide it by four degrees per inch. Uh, this works well for uh, localizer frequencies. And that gives us 38.75 inches to cut from the coarse SPO feed line. Okay, Doug. Why do airplanes always crash on the left? Because 90 hertz less than 150. Ah. You know why seagulls always fly by the sea? If they flew by the bay, they'd be called bagels. <laughs> and we're going to make that cut from the tip of the center conductor of our helios cable. Okay, just keep that cable cable nice and straight there. Don't cut my tape measure. Oh man, that sucks. <laughs> okay, so we just finished cu cutting our cable and uh, turned it back on. He checked both half widths out in the far field and we made a slight adjustment. It doesn't need much. It's not enough to put an elbow or bullet and barrel combination into the cable. At this point, now we can utilize our coarse SBO phase offset within the computer. We have a uh, we have electrical phase adjustment through the amplifiers, uh, about plus or minus 30 degrees. So we're close enough that we can utilize that to get it dialed in. Now in order to see if we're reverse sense, we just need to take the quadrature cable out of our SPO feed line. And uh, we're just going to look at course only. Okay, we're out here in the near field. We're checking out our normal half width points. And everything is properly sensed according to our portable ILS receiver here at our half width points. And we're just about out of daylight for the day, so that is going to wrap it up for day four. And 